Hello chess learners, today I have a special course for you, today, I am going to teach you from Hikaru Nakamura's game, his strategy, and tactics in the king's Indian defense, which he played against Boris Gelfand. Not only will we see his game, but we will also explore his thought process on how he sacrificed his pieces one by one in the game and played a total of five brilliant moves, so let's jump right in and see this amazing game. Boris Gelfand with white plays d4, and Nakamura responds with knight to f6, c4, g6, knight c3, bishop g7. The king's Indian is on the board. This is one of the most aggressive openings black can play against d4. e4, d6, knight f3, castles, bishop e2, and e5, the main line of the king's Indian. Castles knight to c6, immediately going after this d4 square and putting pressure there. e5 gaining space, knight to e7, and knight to d2. More common, perhaps, is knight to e1, but these days the move b4, the bayonet attack is usually played, but after knight to e8, we would transpose into our game after knight d2. Knight d2 is played first, and here Nakamura plays knight to e8. Now this retreating move might look passive, but in fact, it is the most aggressive move black has on the board. He's clearing a way for the f-pawn to advance, and he's not blocking his bishop or slowing down the c5 push from white. Basically, black is saying, this is going to be a race, and I'm going to beat you to the finish line. Nakamura is saying, I'm really going for it. Here, b4 is played, f5 in response, attacking the king's side, c5 just pushing ahead. This knight at d2 is in a position to go to c4 and put pressure on the d6 pawn. Knight to f6, it would be a little premature to play f4 here, because then white can play bishop g4 and exchange off this bishop on c8, and black's light squared bishop is his most important minor piece in this structure, and we'll see why that's the case later. So instead, he plays knight to f6, putting pressure on e4. f3 is played, and f4, and the position gets locked. So the race is on. Black wants to play g5, g4, break on the king's side. White wants to put as much pressure on d6 as possible. The knight can go to b5, the other knight to c4, and really pile on the d6. The knight is played to c4, black plays g5, a4. Now the bishop can go to a3 to increase the pressure on d6. Knight to g6, bishop to a3, rook to f7. Not only does it get out of the aim of this bishop, which is going to be an issue here in a second, but also the rook can defend f7, but can also shift to g7 later. b5, and now the bishop is revealed against the pawn, and black has to take on c5, otherwise he will lose d6. Bishop takes c5. Now h5, continuing to expand on the king's side, a5 on the queen's side, g4, b6, and g3, gaining space all the way down to the g3 square. It may look like white can just play h3 and create a barrier that his king is safe behind, but in fact, this would be completely losing. The reason is this move, bishop takes h3, and that is why the light squared bishop is black's most important minor piece. Because if white tries to build a light squared wall around his king, that bishop can play a demolition sacrifice and tear it apart. If white takes, then queen to c8, coming into h3, threatening queen h2 mate. If king to g2, then just knight to h4 check, king g1, queen h3 would win. If instead of that, rook to f2 is really the only opportunity, then cb6, the rook is threatened, these three pieces are threatened, black is completely winning. So instead of playing h3, Boris Gelfand plays the king to h1. Bishop to f8 is played. Another idea is knight to h7. And watch this mating attack in this game that was played by Kvitten, I don't know how to pronounce his name, Kvitten, I guess, d6, queen to h4, bishop g1. And watch this motif, unreal. Bishop to h3, right? And if g h3, white might be able to survive. But if b takes c7, bishop g2 check, king g2, and look at this move. Are you sitting down? 
Queen to h3 check. How is that even possible? The king can just take the queen, but watch the next two moves. Knight to g5 check, king g2, knight to h4 check, forces the king to h1, and g2 would be checkmate. That is one of the attacking motifs on the board in this game, although this game that we just looked at was a different game. Black plays bishop to f8, d6, ab6. Here, if white plays a b6, then rook a1, queen a1, c d6, and after bishop g1, g h2, bishop h2, then h4. And black's attack is just too strong over here on the king's side, and the knights are coming in, and he's going to be finished. So instead of going down that route, Boris Gelfand plays the bishop to g1. The knight goes to h4, rook to e1, and here Nakamura plays a sacrifice. Knight takes g2, and it turns out Boris Gelfand should have actually taken the knight. That was his best option, was king g2, then rook to g7, aiming at the king, d c7, g h2 check, king h1, take the bishop, promoting to a queen, forcing rook takes g1, then queen takes pawn, takes, takes, b c7. Rook d1, and then after bishop d1, rook g1 check, king g1, knight e8. This would just be an equal endgame for the most part. But instead, he plays the tempting d take c7. Of course, he's attacking the queen and also threatening the exchange of queens. But then Hikaru plays knight takes e1, and now white cannot play pawn takes queen and promoting to a queen. In this position, white is up two queens but what good does that do him because black would play g2, delivering checkmate. So that queen cannot be taken. He has to take the knight. Now g2 check, drawing the king out. He's bringing that king out into the open. King takes g2, rook g7 check. The king cannot move to f2 because of this powerful move, bishop to c5 check. After king f1, rook to g1 would be mate. So the king moves to h1 instead. Now bishop to h3. The threat is simply to mate on g2. If pawn takes queen, bishop g2 checkmate. It's not the pawn this time, it's the bishop. If queen to f2 to defend against bishop g2 mate, then queen to d4, trying to draw that queen away. If the queen takes the queen, then bishop g2 mate again. If rook to d1, Queen takes f2, bishop f2, bishop g2, king g1, bishop f3, discovered check from the rook, and when the king moves over, bishop e2, knight e2, rook c7, and here black is just up an exchange and winning. So Gelfand plays the best defensive move. He plays the move bishop to f1 to cover this square. Now are you sitting down? Do you see the unbelievable shot that Nakamura played in this position? If you can give three exclamation points for a move, that would be what this move would be. Do you see it? An astonishing move, one of the greatest moves ever played on the chessboard. That's right. Queen to d3. Unbelievable move. Obviously, if bishop takes d3, bishop g2 is mate. And if bishop takes h3, winning the bishop instead, then queen takes f3 check, forcing bishop to g2, then queen takes g2 is checkmate. So Boris Gelfand, trying to survive, plays knight takes e5. The idea is he's hitting the queen, but he also is keeping the f3 pawn defended so the queen cannot take f3 with check. Now bishop takes f1, and here if he takes the queen, again the bishop goes back to g2 with mate. Really something else. So instead, white plays queen takes f1, and now queen takes c3, attacking the knight. If the knight goes back to d3 in an attempt to keep the queen from accessing the f3 square, then just queen takes c7 wins. And if a, b, 6, just rook takes a1, pawn takes queen, rook takes queen, and white doesn't have time to promote to a queen because rook takes g1 would be checkmate. So, instead of knight to d3, white plays rook to c1, but then queen takes knight. White promotes to a queen, rook takes queen, rook takes a queen, a rook, excuse me,
then queen to e6, and in this position, Boris Gelfand resigned. You'll see he is down a full piece, and black still has his pressure against the king. One of the most amazing games I've seen, and one of the most amazing moves, that queen to d3 still boggles my mind. Even after going over this great game from Hikaru Nakamura, there's still some great chess you're missing out on. To fix that problem, believe it or not, the key game you're going to want to see is in this video right here, so be sure to watch that next to see some really mind-blowing chess, if you learned something new in chess then don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, bye bye.